Okay, we're here in Antrim with OTB Sports in partnership with AIB. Proud sponsors of the Football, Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. Going to be joined very shortly here at Padre Pierce Park, at the home of Dunloyku Cullen's GEA Club by Gregory O'Kane. He's the manager of the hurling team. For great success last year, all the way to the All-Ireland Senior Club Hurling Final where they ran Ballyhill Shamrocks very close. We're going to chat his own career, the year just gone by with Dunloy and plenty else besides. Gregory O'Kane, how are things? Good, good, well, good. Thanks for having us. I mean, this is this is unbelievable. It's my first time in Dunloy, first time in Pierce Park for sure, and uh, like the facilities are something else. It actually surprises me every time I come to a, a small club like this that I've had success at national level. Kilku being another one, such a small village, and yet so much success. Why? Why is that? Do you think? I, I think probably just a culture, you know, within within the, within the club and within the community, where like. Any other community, like the GA is the hub, and I suppose there's so many people involved, and it just spirals on, you know, from generation to generation, and that's that's what we try to create, you know what I mean? And next people in, and, and, and they do better, and they keep that success and that, that club history going. There's something about the, the area here, so we, we did a bit of a walk around earlier, and you can see, so the church is over here, you've got the primary school and the nursery, you've got the shop, the pitch, the thing about it is that I've noticed that the pitch is the centre of the village, like literally, both geographically and probably yeah. spiritually as well. It's it's the centre of, of everything about Dunloy. They have them sort of under the one umbrella, like it's fantastic. And like the kids you know they're in school, uh, they're out here, they're doing they're doing their PE or they're doing their you know their sports days, and obviously then they're they're about the pitch, which which is key to it, as as having the kids kids about as much as. Well, I'm familiar with your, with your background story, so we'll get to Dunloy's season just gone and what a year it was as well uh, shortly, but uh, there have been a lot of All-Ireland finals and, and unfortunately for yourselves coming up the wrong side of them, but all of them unbelievable experiences I'm sure for you to look back on. Uh, what, what are your memories of that time, that team? I know you're, you had family members in that team as well and close friends. That team would have, would have been similar, like it was just, just a, a group of fellows who, who had come through all their under, underage structures, uh, we'd all got together. Uh, prior to that, in 1990, the club had never won a senior county championship. So I suppose we had all that going on, and then there was a generation of people who hadn't any success. But then, lo and behold, then they put a huge amount of effort into us. Like, you know, people like Wally Richmond, who's still about the club every day of the week, you know, uh, Chris Ellett, Seamus Ellett, you know what I mean? The list is endless, you know, the McMullins. Like, all big, big families, but always, always uh, putting the work in. So we had found that would have been the generation that sort of would have drove us on. Then, as I said, we had our, our underage success, then we won our first championship in 1990. And it was more or less a case of, this club needs to win a county championship. And then from that, it just grew on to Ulsters and competing in All-Ireland Club Finals and getting to All-Ireland Club Finals. Has there been a, a style of play for Dunlaikou Cullens that has kind of been a, a blueprint for success over the years? Even not just talking the current team, but, but even that team from the 90s and, and the early noughties as well. Like when you're watching Dunloy this, this, this season just gone, it's quick, it's fast, Croke Park pitch suits, suits the team so well. Has that always been the case? Has it always been a similar style of play? Well, I think you'll find the game changes from time to time, and particularly modern day, uh, what I would call 2020 hurling. Like, you have to be an athlete to compete, and the game now has gone so fast, mm. and it's played by athletes, what, an average of six foot, you know, playing with a 33, 34 inch hurl, like so the game is, and the skill sets, because you take now the, many, the amount of kids who are playing the game, say, from knee height up, so then their skill level is going to be always always getting better, so like, you find the game now it is so fast because it is played by athletes and the skill levels now are just through, through the roof, and we're no different, you know, we, we, we try to increase all the areas and get better at them, and, and then obviously bring it to the pitch. Was it 1990 the first? Yeah, county championship yeah, yeah. win for, for Dunlight. Yeah, yeah. What was going on before then? Because, as you say, it, it went from barren years to the complete opposite, a total dominance, you could say, in county level. So what was the, what was the difference in, in pre-1990 and post-1990, I guess? Well, I, I would put it down, you know, a lot to, to that underage success where a generation of players come through with absolutely no baggage and, uh, and they just seen it, look, we're going to want a county championship here because we've been at it since, I suppose, Fela Gales, you know what I mean, and right through the age groups. And then we just all arrived at senior, you know, at different stages, 
you know, like an honor 16 team, and then like an honor 14 team, and then like an honor 12, honor 12 team. And then all of a sudden, we all arrived at senior level where, you know, the average age of the team was 22, 23, 24 right. years of age. And uh, obviously then with a spine of, you know, of, of seasoned players like Tony McGrath, Seamus Boy, you know, people like that there. So, and then uh, we just, 1990, we played a Rossa team in the final. And uh, I think they had lost the All-Ireland Club final in 89. Uh, they played Buffers Alley of Wexford. Uh, so that was that was the Savage Rossa team too, you know, Kieran Barr, the Rogans. And uh, we actually drew with them over in Loch Keel. And uh, then we won the replay in Casement. So like, and probably a waterside moment, yeah. you know, for the yeah. club in terms of history. And look, sure, thank God we haven't looked back since. It's funny because there's there's a lot said and done about sports psychology now, a lot more so than compared to the, probably those teams in the early '90s that you, that you speak of. Was it that kind of thing where once once you win once, you, as you say, you, you break the watershed, all of a sudden the young lads in the team and even the experienced fellas realise, well, there's no reason why we can't win and not only win a county title but go on and, and, and achieve a provincial or all, all Ireland level. Once you get a taste of success and you know what it takes then obviously you want to build on that there and then you just want more and more and like, like you never get enough, like, you know, that's, that's reality, like, you know, uh, nobody can ever say we've achieved enough. Do you get addicted to winning? Like, is the, is the, is the feeling of, that, that feeling of going home with the bus and you have a trophy at the front of the bus and there's chance and maybe a few beers and whatever else, there's an addictive nature to that, to that feeling. You, you almost want to, I'd imagine, bottle it up and, and experience it again and again. The memories are better than the medals and to just to live in an atmosphere or a group of players who are achieving what they say to achieve at the start of the year, uh, that's special. And that bond and that friendship then, it just develops into something else. And then all of a sudden you just go on a journey and then you're comfortable in each other's company and then you just want to get the maximum out of each group as it goes along. Is the motivation tough to, to you know, when, when, you're, when you're a serial winner and you want to continue to be a serial winner, I'd imagine Motivation at the start of the year is quite a difficult thing to, to nurture. Like successful people, they want to be successful, and and that's why they do it. And I suppose like every year you have to set your own targets, and and then I suppose then that's all about hitting them targets during the year. But like the Antrim Championship, it's it's hard to win. It's very competitive, and uh, like if you're not on it, you know particularly in Antrim, like you're going to be found out early days and. Like that's, we, we would find it, it, it fairly tough, you know, but uh, all you can be is the best you can be in any given day. Like we look around at the buildings around here and yeah, it takes money to, to kickstart the whole thing and you, you, I guess, approach the GA for funding and all the rest. But at the end of the day, volunteerism is the, is the be all and end all. And there are, I'm sure there are people in this club that just keep the whole thing ticking day to day. The thing about us here, like we've, we're fantastic business people, but just ordinary people in general because I think there's a realisation in, in somewhere like Dunloy. Like, an investment in your club is really an investment in your kids, your grandkids or your family, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, if we have somewhere like this here to bring our kids to and families can come and get involved, sure, what else, what, what more would you want? The, uh, this is where the magic happens. <laughs> the, the, the gym. This is where I'm reading all the quotes on the walls. So you've got what it takes, but it will take everything you've got. I'd say that lads would want to run through walls after doing a, a few weights in here. I'd imagine. I don't know. Like it's as part of it, definitely uh, being the best athlete. You know what I mean. But sure enough, particularly hurling, the game still comes down to skill. Yeah. And uh, you got to if I put the ball over the bar or, or in the net. I suppose when, when you get the chance. So like. Uh, as part of it, definitely building the athlete. The, the strength and conditioning aspect as well is something that, that I, I think, even at club level now, people are surprised by how, how serious and intense it is. Like, it, it's taken off. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Like, it's, it's uh, I suppose, every player now is wanting to be the best athlete they can be. And uh, S&C now, and two, the big thing is the injury prevention. Because you've got to have your players ready 
injury free when you want them. Um, the injury prevention really is important as the S and C. If you can combine the two, um, finding that balance, that fitness, that dynamic, then then supposed to complement what you want to do on the pitch. When you go from player to manager yourself, you've you've been both now. You've experienced both sides of the dressing room, but. Do you have a style that you stick to, or is it very, very much fluid? Look, you know, it's different. You know, uh, I suppose as a player, you can be selfish, and you know, you're only worried about your own game and, and how the team's doing. For buys is, you know, management, like, and you're responsible for everybody. You know, your management team and obviously your players and your team and like uh, a club like the now, like you know, they demand success, and uh, if you're not providing it, then you know, uh, you know, there's somebody tell you very quickly. I remember listening to like different high performance podcasts and that sort of thing and male and female managers both talking about how you know they wouldn't have been emotional they were quite cold and and blunt and that's the way they needed to be but then as soon as they have kids it almost changes their their psyche not just in in regular life but in 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 management as well like have you noticed that yourself have the emotions and, and those occasions where you're either happy or sad been heightened as a result of being a dad I guess? You have a job to do on the day and as ruthless and as hard as you need to be, then you must get the job done. And uh, I suppose look, promotion comes at the end. And uh, like like everybody else, like you know, you love to see your own kids, particularly after the final whistle and uh, but saying that in game mode, then everybody's a job to do. One of the first steps on that emotional ladder this past season was the, the county final for yourselves. Fourth in succession, I think, which is you know, a mark of the achievements that you are uh, accomplishing at the moment. That win over, over Cushendall and late goal, I think, from Chrissy McMahon to, to secure it. Is it tough to celebrate county titles when, you, when you're achieving so much that, that almost you're, you're winning that many county titles that you're thinking about the next step already? You're, you can't really enjoy the moment. You're thinking about Ulster. You're thinking about All-Ireland. Or do you get to, I guess, appreciate the moment for what it is? No, I, I think particularly ourselves. Like, like, we would appreciate county finals as really, really special days, like because it took us a long time to get over the line in county finals. Like uh, so, it's something we never take for granted. And uh, particularly the last day against Cushendall, like, like super county final, and uh, went to the wire at the end. And uh, you know, for us to, to get over the line that day, I felt sort of that was nearly like an expression of the team that day, where that experience. And that know-how probably seen us through at the end. And then you get to provincial level and you look at some of the teams that are, that are in the shake-up. Slough Neil being the obvious name in recent years that everyone will know or a, a top duo club as well. Does it get feisty at provincial level? I know lads know each other at, at, at um, club level within the county maybe a little bit more, but I even look at the, the Ulster Senior Club football final this year between Glen and, and Kilcoo was a fairly feisty one, you know. Sledgen's taken over in Gaelic uh, in recent years, and it just it just is something that happens. Does does it get feisty at those levels when you're when you're playing the likes of Slough Neil that there's there's no love lost until the final whistle, I suppose. Yeah, I actually was at that game, Kilcoo and, and Glen, and it was hard hitting. But like, uh, I think you find that now with successful clubs that uh, there'll always be a successful club, say in a neighbouring county or the same province, and that rivalry builds up, and especially now with with society in general and people in general where there's always an interaction or there's always somebody connected to somebody in another club, even in another county and then you find that rivalry and then that generates particularly and two, the big thing is now that, that the interprovincials like, it's played now sort of what, November, December so like, the game then is more tighter, scores are hard to come by so the physicality goes up and probably the skill goes down slightly so you would see that that as well in a lot of the games. Ali needed a Fraser or or a George Foreman or whatever. That that helps the drum up the interest in club club games. Like the whole Kilmacud Glen saga as well. As crazy as it was, everyone was talking about the club game. You know, maybe for the wrong reasons in some ways, but the club game needs some of these stories and needs some of these narratives, I guess, to play out and, and teams to have that little bit of edge to, to to drum up interest in it. You would see that, and I would find like the split season now is probably developing the clubs more, developing the club player more. And I think you're going to find now that clubs are going to a different level because they know, you know their, their season, they know when the season gets serious. And like, for instance, like a club player now, 
you know, if he wants to have a break for a few months, he can go to America, he can go, he can go a bit of travel and see about the world and then come back, keep himself fit and healthy. And then he, he knows exactly when the club season is. So like that said, I find the level of clubs now will actually keep that projected, will keep going up. And you, I think you're going to find really, really quality uh, club games as we go on here. Well, I'll tell you what we might do. We might go over to the clubhouse because there's, I was over there earlier. I mean, you might run out of room for trophies in the next few years if you keep winning county titles, as you say. I think that was the 16th county title this year. Ulster titles on top of that as well. So we might take a, a quick look over and, and, and see some of the work that's going on over there because it's, it's, it's brilliant. Gregory, um, the photos on the wall here. I mean, you're you're in plenty of them. There's there's one or two that you're in, slightly lo younger looking. I have to say, you're you're not looking bad these days still. But it must be strange to come in here and see the, the photos of years gone by and teams gone by, and then you have the trophies on the way up as well. It probably puts things in perspective for you a bit. I said earlier on, like memories are more important. I find than medals, and uh, just you know, you shared that experience with a lot of players, a lot of people in the club. Sure, it's, it's fantastic, you know, and a great experience for me. What's the state of, of Antrim hurling generally at the moment? Like you, you mentioned a few of the clubs earlier, like Cushendall and 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 Lockheed and, and yourselves, and it's quite competitive at the moment. I'm sure it's benefiting from the fact that Antrim at county level, you know, we're getting a bit of Joe McDonough experience, Division Two experience. That can only help. The county side now, I think this is our third year in, in Division One. Uh, so like, that's that's fantastic. You know, to you know to go go to Corrigan and I think Kilkenny was up there three weeks ago. Like so, like to get that uh, exposure in Division One hurling, like it's it's uh, it's fantastic. So uh, good for Antrim, good for clubs, and good for hurling in general in the county. What impact is emigration having on on Dunloe and clubs in this general area? Like it, it hits a lot of clubs across the country, especially the west of Ireland, maybe quite quite significantly. Lads heading off to Australia and America. And Canada, and look, good luck to them. I mean, they, they, you know, you're only young once, and they have to enjoy themselves. But I, I'd imagine for for clubs like Dunoy, it, it can be a, an issue that crops up. That travel bug is is definitely there. Uh, thank God, at the minute, uh, we have we have really strong businesses around the club, so all our young people are are employed uh, in full time employment. So that helps too. Uh, not saying it hasn't affected us in the past. We've had players travel, but. Uh, thank God we haven't had a mass exodus of players travelling. It's sort of been ones and twos, and uh, look, you never like to see any of your players going. But as you say, like the attraction, you know, and, and if a young player says to you, "Look, I'm going away for one, two, three years travelling," and you shake your hands, you thank them for everything they've done, you know, and then you wish them well, and hopefully they don't like it and, and they're <laughs> back as they're back as soon as. It's amazing. That we were saying earlier how success breeds. Continued success in that young people in the club would have been watching your Dunloe team winning trophies and, and getting to all Ireland finals and, and that'll inspire them to push on. But it's probably the same for, for the older lads who who were maybe thinking of, of, of travelling for a year. They might, you know, when they're in their prime and Dunloe are achieving like they are at the moment, they might put it off because they're thinking, well, don't want to miss a potential run again to Croke Park. When you're involved in a group of players and a group in general that has success, then you're right, like it's, it's hard to walk away from because you're really, you could be sitting on the other side of the world and, and your team achieve great things, you know what I mean? But like it's, it's harder to walk away definitely when you're successful and maybe not so hard when, you know, when you're not achieving as much. I think I'd, I'd read you saying before you were talking about, I think it was a build up to one of, one of the games maybe last season, you were talking about how in Dunloy, like in a lot of clubs, it's inherited, that it's, it, it very much is a thing that's, that's passed on. There's, a young girl or boy born in, 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 you know, to someone in this village, and it's it's only going to be one sport. They're going to play hurling or camogie. They've no choice essentially. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're, we're dual, you know, as well. We, we we play the Gaelic as well. But I find now, like, it's sort of when you're involved in a club, it's nearly like your duty 
to pass something on that was passed on to you and to give young people an opportunity to be as good as they can be and pass it on which, which was handy. So there nearly is the, that, that sense of oldness that we have to pass it on to, to the next generation. Is that dual nature that you mentioned, is that, is that a challenge for you? Is it tough? To, like, I, I'm wondering how many players on the hurling panel you have as a crossover on the, on the football team and, and how you manage their... I guess they're getting pulled in two directions by, by two different sets of management. It, it, it must provide some challenges at times. We would always say a good hurler is naturally a good footballer. <laughs> so a fo good footballer is not necessarily <laughs> naturally a good hurler. So uh, in that aspect, you know, we'd have a fair spread now of dual players. Uh, as I say, we won the intermediate there there last year along with the the, the hurling. So uh, the players they enjoy their football, you know what I mean, and uh, so like they, they they just like that sense. I suppose the intermediate they've been chasing it a good few years, and this year they finally go over the line. So good for the players. I think with some like 12, 13, 14 dual players interacting between them, the hurling and the football. So like it. Uh, the job is keeping them fit and healthy for both, and sure, look, that, that's what we try to do. Do you find the pressure ramps up year on year because you've set the bar so high uh, as a manager winning county titles and, and winning Ulster titles? Does it get to the point then where you're thinking, Jesus, well, uh, how high can I set the bar? Like, do, do you year on year have set targets, or, or how, do you, how do you go about reaching the, the, the expectations you have for yourself, I suppose? Well, I think every year is different, right? And two, uh, you have to improve. You know, I mean, if, if you don't improve from last year, well, then it won't be good enough this year. And uh, it's just every year is different. It starts, it's a new year, it's a new challenge. And uh, just trying to be better than you were last year. And like a player or like anybody, I'm no different. I, I need to find an avenue where I can be better than I was last year. And uh, that, that's, that's the way I would look at it. Well, listen, long may the success with the Dunlikey Collins continue. It's a... It's unbelievable the facilities that we've seen today. Like I, I, I said to you earlier, like I can't believe when you're coming through the village, such a small village, and yet, as we say, the GA pitch is at the centre of it. The facilities are, are next level uh, for, for, a, for a team this size. So uh, congratulations on all the success you're having. Thank you.